Bienvenidos. Today we're going to talk about negative two commands and go over how to form them. If you are a little rusty on affirmative two commands, you might want to review those first before going through this video. Let's start by defining what is a command. Well, to be clear, that means you're telling someone directly to do something or not to do something. So some examples. Don't talk while the teacher is talking. Do your homework. You're telling someone directly to do or not do these things. In this video, we're specifically going to work with negative two commands. So what does that mean? Well, negative meaning you're telling someone don't do something. They should not do something. When we're using two as a recap, remember you're addressing a single person informally. So someone that you are friendly with, they are your age, perhaps younger, the same people you would use to with normally, these would be appropriate commands to tell them not to do something. All right, so now that we've defined what negative two commands are, los mandatos negativos, how do we actually form them? What are their conjugations? Well, the first step, and this is very important, is that remember they're negative. So we need a negative word before the actual verb. So we need to remember to put the word no before the verb. Otherwise, it won't be considered negative. Now, this is pretty easy. So we conjugate the verb in the yo form of the present tense. So for example, if I have my first step, no, I need to remember to include that. Second step, conjugate the verb in the yo form of the present tense. So let's say I have hablar. That would be hablo like so. My next step is to drop the O, so that's going to disappear. And then I add the opposite to ending. So a blar is an AR verb, so I will add ES onto the end. So it'll be a blaze. Now I need to put this together with the NO to form the full command. So my whole thing would equal NO hables, don't talk. NO hables. So that's how it would work with an AR verb. Now, you're probably asking, why didn't I just start with this little stem here? The reason we have to go with the present tense is to account for any weird spellings that we might need. So for example, this time let's work with the verb hacer in the ER verb. The yo form of hacer in the present tense is ago. It's a go verb. I'm gonna drop the O. And then I'm going to add the opposite ending. So hacer is an ER verb. So because of that, I need to add AS on the end to make the command form. So it would be agas. And then the whole thing to say don't do or don't make is no agas. No agas la tarea en clase, por favor. And just like any other tense or mood that you've talked about in Spanish, there are always irregulars. So what are the irregulars we need to be aware of when working with negative two commands? Well, we've got to watch out for those car, gar, and czar verbs that you worked with in the preterite. Those same preterite spell changes are going to show up in these negative two commands. So for example, if a verb ends in car, that C needs to change to a Q-U before you add the ending. In gar, the G changes to a GU before you add the ending. Zar, the zeta, turns into a se before you add the ending. Now, these are all AR verbs, which is why they all get the same ending, ASA, over here. So, for example, if I want to say, don't look for a pencil right now. Maybe I'm talking and I don't want someone to be not paying attention. I'd say... No busques. Don't look for. I've got that Q-U and then the E-S on the end. Don't arrive late. No llegues tarde. The G-U and then the E-S ending. Llegues. And then... Oops. For czar, the C changes, and then add ES. Oh, 
Okay, so besides the car, gar, and czar verbs being irregular that we need to watch out for, we also need to watch out for these irregular verbs. These are just plain old irregular. They have weird forms, and we need to make sure that we have them memorized. So what do we got? We got dar, which is to give, a star, which is to be, for situations that show up in the acronym place. So positions, location, action, condition, emotion. Ear, which is to go. Sayer, which is to be again, but in situations from the acronym doctor. So description, occupation, characteristic, time or date, origin, relationships. And saber, which is to know. Now, saber I've included here because it's helpful to know that this is irregular because it'll show up in later command lessons as well. So what are the actual command forms? Now remember these are all negative, so they're all going to need no first. Then they're irregular command forms for two commands that are negative. So no des, don't give. No estes, so don't be. Don't be sad. Don't go. No vayas. Don't be mean, no seas, don't know, no sepas. And again, these ones we just need to memorize. They're just a little bit odd. So no des, no estes, no vayas, no seas, y no sepas. Now the last thing we need to cover is what do we do with object pronouns in relationship to the negative commands? So by object pronouns, I mean things like direct object pronouns, DOPs, indirect object pronouns, IOPs, or perhaps a reflexive pronoun like may, te, se, nos, os, or se. So the rule with these for all negative commands is you must put this pronoun before the negative command as a separate word. That happens for, again, all negative commands. So some examples. Don't chop them, the tomatoes being the them. This is an example with a DOP. Don't chop them. No. Los piques. The verb chop is picar, which is a car verb, so it's got this weird spelling because it's a car verb. I've got my negative command form here, and the DOP goes right before it. So no. Los piques. Don't stand up, so here we've got a reflexive verb, which would be levantarse as an infinitive. No te levantes. No te levantes, don't stand up. So the reflexive goes before. And remember, we're using those opposite endings. It's an AR verb usually, so it gets ES on the end. No te levantes. Don't write the recipe for her. Now we've got an IOP. Don't write the recipe for her. No le escribas la receta a ella. So the for her is represented by this le, the IOP here, and it's clarified down here by this additional indirect object. So again, we've got our command form, and the IOP is situated before it as a separate word. Again, this is the same for all negative commands, no matter what type. If you've got a negative command, then your object pronoun must go before your verb. All right, and that's our brief overview of negative two commands and what the rules are that go along with them and how to conjugate these new verb forms. So make sure that you memorize the rules. Feel free to look over the video again then practice. The more you practice, the easier these will get, and the more they just become like second nature to you. Gracias. Buena suerte.